So in the last video, I said we would look at a contract before we talked about convergence. And the contract I've chosen here, as you can see, is Live Cattle Futures. And this is from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange rule book. This, uh, this whole chapter, chapter 101, is from the rule book. So let's see what we have here. First thing we come across, contract specification. It tells us in the first line, each futures contract shall be for 55% choice, 45% select, yield grade 3, live steers or live heifers. Uh, this is explained later on, but I'll tell you now because it's buried in the print. It doesn't say and or. It says live steers or live heifers. You can't mix them. Either you deliver all live steers or all live heifers. Trading specifications, it tells you, hey, check the exchange. The exchange will tell you uh, um, what, what months it's scheduled for and what hours and delivery in such months as may be determined by the exchange. So you just look that up. Trading unit, 40,000 pounds. Each contract is for 40,000 pounds of either live steer or live heifers, and they repeat the grade, 55% choice, 45% select. Talk about the minimum price fluctuation shall be multiples of a very small number. Now, the first two decimals represent our pennies. So we can see that if we divide one penny by that number, we will get 40 price increments. So every penny is broken down into 40 price increments. 40 of them. So when we look at the price of live cattle, and let's say it's $1.45, there's no decimal in there. It's not quoted as $1.45. It's quoted as 145.000. And then the next increment is 145.025. Then the next increment is 145.05. So there are 40 ticks in there. Each contract is for 40,000 pounds. So if you take 40,000 and you divide it by 100, 100 cents, you get $400 per penny. So if the contract is for $400 per penny and there are 40 price increments per penny, every price increment represents 10 bucks. So every price increment on this contract will be 10 bucks. It sets out daily price limits. Now it sets out two, with the exception of the last two trading days in the expiring contract month, a price limit of three cents per pound. But since cattle is quoted in pennies, so we look at the price, we see 145. That's not 145 dollars. That's 145 cents. So that the daily price limit up and down is 300. It looks like 300. That's really 3 cents because it's quoted as 145.000. Remember that now. So you may say, I've seen it up 3 bucks and down 3 bucks. That's not $3. Because if it were quoted as 145 bucks, then yeah, it's 3 bucks. But it's 145 cents. So 3 up is 148 cents. So it looks like 3 bucks because there's no decimal place between the 1 and the 4. Just remember that. Some contracts are quoted fully in pennies. Your grains, cattle, quoted fully in penny. Live hogs, fully in pennies. Some are quoted in dollars and cents like oil. Dollars and cents. So there's our daily uh, price limits. On the last two days, what happens? Well, they expand the limit up and limit down to be five cents per pound. And this just may be because the, the end of the month is drawing near. There's some fundamental information that won't allow the price to move to the spot price if you limit it to three cent moves per day. It might need a five cent move per day to help get it closer to the spot price by the end of the contract term. That's what we're going to talk about next is convergence. Uh, let's keep scrolling down and see what we have. Settlement procedures, sources and calculation of adjustment factors. And here is where they list all the possibilities saying, okay, well, maybe you can't deliver 5545, all steers are all heifers. Here's the price adjustments for being off grade. And look at the, look at, uh, the writing here, look at the list and uh, what it goes, live graded deliveries, tells you delivery days, seller duties, 
the type of payment, par delivery and substitution. Uh, and it continues on and on, yield deviations, what happens there, uh, yield grade deviations, quality grade deviations, and all the different uh, uh, adjustments and allowances that are made for that, for all, all of these. Delivery points and allowances, so here's all our delivery points. Look at all the places that, that, uh, um, the, that it can be delivered depending on where your, uh, where your livestock yard is or where your feedlot is. Payments for deviation, and what happens if there's a deviation? Uh, when is it going to be graded? The timing for grading, because all these contracts must be graded. Uh, grading and estimating yield. Everything is in here. I'm not going to continue on. You can see that uh, as I'm scrolling down, we're on page 4 of 10. There's page 5 of 10. It keeps going. There's more. There's page 6 of 10. Now, if you're a speculator, a lot of this stuff down here isn't going to really matter to you. Uh, you're really more or less concerned with uh, the contract, uh, uh, the trading times, the size of the contract, the price increment, and later on, the margin requirements. But there is uh, uh, just an example, a real-world example of everything we just talked about for live cattle futures. Well, with that out of the way, let's now get back to where we left off, and we were just about to talk about convergence. Uh, and when we talk about convergence, what we're talking about is the futures price versus the spot price. And there are two charts in the textbook, and I've redrawn them here. The first one shows that as we approach the expiration time, the expiration date, initially the futures price is above the spot price, but on the day of expiration, they converge. Or it could be that the spot price is initially above the futures price and as we approach expiration on the day of expiration they converge now why the futures would be greater than the spot price at some previous date or why the spot would be greater than the futures price, we'll find out why as we go through the text we'll find some examples where this is the relationship that we'll see in the marketplace or this is the relationship and it's better explained then so just understand that it could be either one of them right now Okay, great. Let's talk about this point. Why is it that on the date of expiration, the prices converge? Now, to make it a little more complicated, rather than just saying, well, because that's the last day of trading, what else would the price be except the price of the underlying? Okay, that's great. But some contracts look like this. Delivery starts here. This is a timeline. And the contract expires here. A good example of this is uh, um, live cattle. And delivery actually uh, starts here. There's an expiration. Delivery actually extends past the date so that the contract expires within the delivery period. But you may also have a situation where you have expiration and delivery doesn't start till much later so that it expires outside of the delivery period. So if the futures price converges to the spot price, how is it that sometimes they do so within the delivery period and sometimes they do so outside of the delivery period? You would think that, well, if it expires here for delivery here, shouldn't the futures price represent this date and not the spot price on this date? In other words, shouldn't they look like this? Shouldn't there be a gap representing that delivery doesn't happen? Technically, yeah. Technically, it should. But here's what happens to, to almost, well, I shouldn't say almost. It, is, it, is, it just happens because of this mechanism. Let's look at settlement. All right, we're going to look at daily settlement. And we're going to look at the day before expiration. So we're going to look right here, the day before expiration. Well, there has to be settlement. So let's say we're at the end of that day, expiration is tomorrow. Well, we have to settle up. So the buyer will either gain or lose some money. The seller has the opposite effect, will either lose or gain some money. And the settlement is based on the previous day's close, on the futures, on the previous day's close. So. When we settle here, it'll settle based on whatever the previous day's close was. But let's move one day forward and let's say now it is the expiration date. 
and on the expiration date the buyer will either gain some money or lose some money and the seller will either lose some money or gain some money the opposite effect of the buyer remember it's a zero sum however settlement is not based on the closing price of the futures the day before settlement is based on the spot whatever the spot price is that day sets the settlement for the end of the day such that because of that basically the futures price at the end of the day is the spot price because that's the that's the number that's used for settlement that's convergence now we're going to say a lot more about convergence as we go through some of the chapters and we're going to see that it is not necessary that this happens that it converges uh, uh, depending on what we're using for the futures contract. We have to understand one thing here. There is no such thing as a perfect hedge. There's no such thing as a perfect hedge. There's always some risk based on the hedge that we're using such that while theoretically there should be this convergence, it may not always be the case that we get that convergence, but it will tend towards that convergence. So let's, uh, let's wait until we get there, all right? Good enough.